Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss about the biography of T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot, whose full name was Thomas Stone Eliot, he belonged to the modern age. Modern age comes after the Victorian age. T.S. Eliot was famous poet, playwright and critic. T.S. Eliot is in the syllabus of UP PGT. If you are preparing for UP PGT, this video is so much helpful for you. If you are preparing for NT and NET GRS, this video will help you too. If you are from outside UP and preparing for TGT or LT grade, see your syllabus. If TS Elliot is in your syllabus, you can watch this video. This video will help you to understanding the life history of T.S. Eliot and his works. This is Dinesh Kumar and you are watching my YouTube channel English History Point. If you are watching this video on Facebook, you are watching my Facebook page English History Point. If you are new to my channel, subscribe to my channel and on Facebook, follow and like my page for, to be connected for upcoming videos. So without wasting time, let's start this video. Hello everyone, this video is English to English medium. If you want to watch this video English and Hindi medium, I suggest you to press the I button given here. After pressing the I button, you will reach to the Hindi medium of this video. Let's start this video. Friends. Thomas Stone's Eliot was the full name of T.S. Eliot. He was belonged to the modern age. Modern age comes after the Victorian age. T.S. Eliot was a famous playwright, poet and critic. He was born in 1888 and died in 1965. Friends, if you want to note these points in your notebook, you can pause this video and note all the points and if you don't want to note these points watch this video five times again and again all the points will be set in your mind in this video i'll teach you the biography of t.s Eliot with the help of some points the first point is of birth in this point we will see when he was born where he was born and what was the year and what was the country let's see T.S. Eliot was born on September 26. What was the date? The date was of 26 and the month was of September. And what was the year? The year was 1888. Let's see once again. September 26, 1888. And what was the place? He was born in St. Louis, Missouri in Midwestern America. T.S. Eliot was born in America, where? In Missouri. And what was the place? St. Louis. Remember this point. Let's see. What was the date? September 26. Once again, T.S. Eliot was born on September 26. The year was 1888. The place was St. Louis that comes in Missouri and Missouri comes in Midwestern America. Okay. And what was the nickname of T.S. Eliot? T.S. Eliot's nickname was Tom. T.S. Eliot was born in America, although his forefathers were living in Britain. What was the motherland of his forefathers? His forefathers motherland was, mother country was Britain. But his grandfather came to America and settled there. So, he born in America. But after completing his 24 years in America, he went to Britain once again and attained British citizenship in 1927. Remember this point. He returned to Britain to his forefather's motherland and settled in 1927 and also attained British citizenship. Next point is of father. 
who was father of T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot's father was Henry Ware Eliot. Note this name. Henry Ware Eliot was the name of his father. He was a successful businessman. He was a Boston Brahmin. His father was a Boston Brahmin routine in England. T.S. Eliot's grandfather had moved to St. Louis, Missouri, America. I have already told you that his grandfather came to America, although his mother country was England. But he came to America and settled in St. Louis, Missouri, America. After that, his father and his forefathers attained the citizenship of America and started living there. T.S. Eliot was born at St. Louis, Missouri, America. Next point is of mother. What was the name of his mother? His mother name was Charlotte Champish Turn. Note this name. She was a poet and social worker. T.S. Eliot's mother also was a poet and social worker. She had six children. His mother had six children and T.S. Eliot was the last child. T.S. Eliot was the youngest of all the six childs of his mother, his father. Next point is of education. Let's see in this point where he got his early education and after that his higher education. He attained a Smith Academy for his early education. He got his early education from a Smith Academy where he studied Latin, ancient Greek, French and German. He studied Latin, ancient Greek, uh, French and German from a Smith Academy from where he got his early education. After that, he studied at Harvard from 1906 to 1909. When he started studying in Harvard, he started studying at Harvard in 1906 and completed in 1909. He graduated in philosophy and he got his master degree or completed his MA in English literature from 1911 to 1914. Note this point. He got his master degree from 1911 to 1914. He was studying Indian philosophy and Sanskrit. He had also the knowledge of Indian philosophy and Sanskrit. And he was studying this at Harvard University. Let's see next point. Next point is of his marriage life. At Harvard, he met Emily Hale and fall in love with her. Note that he fall in love with Emily Hale. Emily Hale met him at Harvard when he was getting his higher education. They exchanged letters during 1914 to 1915. In this, they were in touch with the exchanging letters of love, exchanging love letters. But later on, they didn't meet again until 1927. There was a big gap after that, after Harvard. And they didn't meet again until 1927 when he was of 26 when he completed his 26 years of his life he met Bebeni Heywood note this name note this name this name is so much important Bebeni Heywood she was Cambridge governess hmm. he married with her at Hamestead register office he got married at Hamestead Register Office with Bebeni Haywood. Bebeni Haywood was Cambridge's governess. He married at Hamestead Register Office. When he was married, 
he married at 26 june in 1915 when he was married he was married in 1915 what was the date the date was the 26 june what was the place hammerstead register office with whom he was married he married with bebenny haywood who was bebenny haywood bebenny haywood was cambridge governess his first wife who was his first wife who was t.s Eliot's first wife bebenny haywood was the first wife of t.s Eliot. but unfortunately He died in 1947. Before dying, unfortunately, they became separate. They formally separated in 1933 because Bebeni health was not good in those days. The result was that they became formally separated in 1936. So, in this way, the in this way, the marriage was not successful. T. S. Eliot married two times in his life first time with bibeni haywood and the second time with Valerie fisher and he married with Valerie fisher in 1957 so in this way you can say he got two time he got married two times the first time in 1915 and the second time in 1957 let's see literary life t.s Eliot was so much talented he started his uh, he started composing poems when he was only of 14 when he was of 14 his first published poem was a fable for fiestas a fable for fiestas composed by t.s Eliot when he was of 14 it was written as a school exercise and was published in the smith academy record in february 1905 when it was written when it was uh, when was a fable for festers written it was written in 1905 and published in a smith academy record it was uh, written as a school exercise when he was studying at a smith academy he published his three short stories in 1905 in the same year, he published three short stories also. In this way, you can say that in his childhood, he was starting poems, short stories and uh, fables. Some short stories name are given here. The first is Boat's Fray, A Tale of a Whale, The Man Who Was King. These are the short stories of T.S. Eliot when he was in his childhood, when he was studying at his Smith Academy. And these short stories got published in 1905. In the same year, he was he also published his first poem, Fable for Fiestas. Next point, next point is of his work. T. S. Eliot was famous for modern poet, playwright, and critic. This point, I have already told you that T. S. Eliot was famous poet, playwright, and uh, critic. He had a very best friend, very good friend. The name of the friend was Ezra Pound. And T.S. Eliot met Ezra Pound in 1914. Note these points. Otherwise, watch this video again and again. When was T.S. Eliot met with Ezra Pound? He met with Ezra Pound in 1914. Who was Ezra Pound? Ezra Pound was the best friend and the teacher and the counselors and the advisor of T.S. Eliot. He was Eliot's literary mentor. Mentor means counselor, mentor means advisor. So, Ezra Pound was so much important for the life, for the literary life of T.S. Eliot. He was the literary mentor of T.S. Eliot, who got his poems published and added him in receiving critical acclaim. Acclaim means praise. Critical, important, important phrase. Ezra Pound helped T.S. Eliot 
in getting popular famous and well known poet Eliot's first major poem was the love song of J Alfred Prufrock this poem is so much important note this poem this point is important for all the competitive exams the love song of J Alfred Prufrock was the first major poem of T S Eliot it was published in magazine of words where the first major poem of T.S. Eliot was published. It was published in a magazine of words. Ezra Pound proceeded the magazine editor to publish that poem. Ezra Pound, who was friend, who was the teaser of T.S. Eliot, proceeded the magazine editor. He agreed. He made agreed to the magazine editor to publish that poem. Later, that poem was published separately as uh, part of Eliot's first collection of poetry. But later on, this poem also published in the first collection of poetry by T.S. Eliot. And what was the name of the collection of poetry? The collection of poetry's name was Prufrock and Other Observations in 1947. Note this. In the collection that's name was poor frog and other observation in 1947 in this collection his first major poem was published from where the first major poem of T.S. Eliot's title taken from taken from the love song of her the love song of her it is written by Rudyard Kipling whose poem is this the love song of Hordeal. This poem is of Rudyard Kipling. The poem's well-known opening lines are, and what are the opening lines? What are the important opening lines of this poem? The opening lines are given here. Be familiar with these lines. Let us go then, you and I. When the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient ethered upon a table. These are the opening lines of the poem. His next major poem was The Wasteland. The Wasteland also was major poem of T.S. Eliot. It is considered as the second major poem of and popular famous second major poem of T.S. Eliot. The Wasteland. It was published in the Criterion. In the Criterion, the Wasteland was published in, in Criterion. And uh, the Wasteland was dedicated to Ezra Pound and uh, referred him as Il Miglior Fabro. What was the meaning of Il Miglior Fabro? The meaning of these words are the better craftsman. But the poem was criticized. This poem got criticism because it is considered as obscure. Obscure means unclear and complex. Complex means difficult. The poem, The Waste Land, considered as it is unclear and difficult. So, this poem got so much criticism also. To whom the wasteland was dedicated? It was dedicated to his best friend Ezra Found. The poem reflects the moral and spiritual decay in the post-World War in Europe. T.S. Eliot was so much influenced, so much affected with the post-World War in Europe. So, he wanted to represent the so he reflects the moral and spiritual decay of that time. Some essays of T.S. Eliot are given here. Tradition and the Individual Talent Published in 1920 And the second was Hamlet and his Problems Published in the same year 1920 Made him famous modern critic. T.S. Eliot was so much famous critic and his two essays, Tradition and the Individual Talent, 
and Hamlet and his problems made him famous modern critic and both the essays got published in 1920. Who defines poetry as not a turning loose of emotion but an escape from emotion, not the impression of personality but an escape from personality. This line is so much important. You can say this is the important quote of T.S. Eliot. This is the definition of poetry given by T.S. Eliot. Eliot's volume of plays published in 1962 and in the in that volume some important plays got published. First is Murder in the Cathedral published in 1935 and the second play was The Family Reunion mm, so much important published in 1939. The Cocktail Party published in 1949. The Confidential Clock published in 1954. The Elder Statesman published in 1959. Note these plays and the publication year. These points will help you in cracking upcoming exams. Awards Next point is of awards. T.S. Eliot was awarded as Nobel Prize. T.S. Eliot got Nobel Prize in Literature for his pioneer contribution of poetry. The last point of his biography is death. T.S. Eliot died on January 4, 1965 in London. When he was died, he was died in 1964. He was died in 1965 and the date was January 4. He died in London, although he was born in America, but died in London. His ashes were flashed in St. Michael's Church. Ashed Coker. Ashed Coker was his ancestor's village, means his forefather's village. And his ashes were flashed in Michael's Church when on 17th April 1965. I think this video is helpful for you. I hope you will like this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and share this video in your friend circle. Help your friends. And in the last, if you are new to my channel, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get all the notifications of upcoming videos. See you in next video. Bye bye.